Hi, this is Tom Rogers, MD at Performance Medicine, coming to you with a weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. I've got something really neat to talk to you about today. Um, you know, at Performance Medicine, we see a lot of gut issues, a lot of gastrointestinal problems that really don't have an obvious answer. So a lot of people come to us for that. Plus, whenever I see an autoimmune disease that we treat a lot of, I always, the first thing I ask is, how's your gut? It's usually dysfunctional. So today I'm going to talk about something called microscopic colitis, something you've probably never heard about, but you should know about it, um, especially people that have a lot of chronic diarrhea. Now, with gut problems, you know, everybody's heard the word IBS. You know, they, you've had a negative GI workup. Maybe you've been scoped, maybe you've had some tests, nothing comes back positive, but yet you still have stomach cramps or diarrhea or constipation or bloating, gas, whatever. You've got a gut problem and the cursory workup you've had may not have shown anything. You might have had a very complete workup and it still showed nothing. So what could it be? You've been told, well, it may be a functional illness. Now, when we say functional illness, that means it's in your head. Um, it's psychological. Um, and this is very common. I see this all the time. People are told this. And granted, stress can cause GI problems. It's certainly a contributing factor. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Um, but usually there's some other problems that can go along with it because we need to find the root cause then we need to find a cure for it, um, if there is one, and there usually is. Um, irritable bowel syndrome. Many of you have had it or have it. It's a chronic condition. Um, but it's really a term that we use because we don't know what it is, really. Um, and we're going to talk about one that's frequently called IBSD, which means irritable bowel syndrome with predominantly diarrhea. Um, I recently had a patient that came to my office for another reason. Um, and she was t telling me about her gut story. And it was just really interesting. You know, a lot of my patients, when they come in, I love to talk to them about their medical issues, uh, especially if they haven't found a reason for it. Um, but anyway, this lady had suffered from chronic diarrhea with all the gut tests coming back negative, including colonoscopies and upper GIs and ultrasounds, blood tests, everything looked negative. So we usually call it IBSD in that, in that situation, at least the GI guys do, and most doctors do. No, no problem with that, but really there's a reason, and that's what we want to find out. Um, through this patient's own persistence and research, she was a researcher, or is a researcher, she really came up with the fact that she had classic symptoms of microscopic colitis. And the reason they call it microscopic is because you can't see it. I mean, you can have a normal colonoscopy unless they do some biopsies and look at it under the microscope. Um, and you almost have to tell them to do this, um, or, or they need to perk up their attention to the, your symptoms. Um, so microscopic colitis, unlike when you do a, a colonoscopy with somebody with ulcerative colitis, or maybe Crohn's, uh, you, or you do a biopsy for celiac disease, you can usually see changes. So this is microscopic. Only be diagnosed with a biopsy and look at it, at it under the microscope. Uh, microscope. Um, the condition, which I suspect to be vastly underdiagnosed, uh, can be treated. And that's the hope for it. It's characterized by non bloody diarrhea, usually worse at night. That can be a hallmark, usually worse at night. It's more common in middle aged women. Um, and it's thought to be autoimmune, but there can be a lot of triggers, which we'll talk about. There's really two types 
they're treated the same, but there's two types. One is collagenous and one's lymphocytic, or you can have a mix of both those. Now, that's really not of your concern because if you have it, you have it. They're treated the same way. Um, but anyway, so that's technically uh, correct. But anyway, there can be a lot of triggers, including medications. You know, whenever I see somebody that's sick or doesn't feel good, I always ask them for a list of their medicines. And it's just when I did the research on this, it's it's a lot of the medicines I don't really like to use anyway. And the most famous ones for this, causing this or relationship to this, are the PPIs, like a meprazole, uh, the nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories like Motrin, Naproxen, that uh, that class of medications, beta blockers which are treated for heart disease, hypertension, makes you tired, lower your heart rate, a lot of side effects with beta blockers. Statins, in my opinion, they're overused. Um, SSRIs, um, especially Zoloft, um, interesting. Smoking is also a risk factor. Um, previous autoimmune diseases like celiac, type 1 diabetes, uh, thyroiditis, look at Hashimoto's and how common that is. Rheumatoid arthritis, any kind of inflammatory arthritis. Mild acid malabsorption, something I call BAM. Not, not too uncommon um, can play a factor. The gut microbiome always plays a factor. Um, food can be a factor. In fact, people with celiac disease are 70 times more likely to have microscopic colitis. 70 times. Synthetic hormones can also play a role in this, synthetic estrogens especially. Um, but the diagnosis can be difficult, like I said. The hallmarks, chronic, non-bloody, watery diarrhea up to 15 times a day at times. You can have stomach cramps with them. Um, like I said, more at night. You can have urgency and even fecal incontinence, like you just can't make it to the bathroom common with this and usually we see weight loss with weight loss with this and fatigue because you're not absorbing things um, these people get depressed um, blood test even stool biomarkers like calprotectin and lactoferrin are usually not helpful for this diagnosis um, it requires usually two biopsies of the right transverse descending and sigmoid colon. Um, this disease can have spontaneous remissions and exacerbations, but it's usually chronic. It does not increase your risk of colon cancer. It's important. So what do you do if you suspect this? Again, if you've had a normal colonoscopy, you know, you don't really want to go back and get another one you know, with the biopsies that are necessary. So you might even empirically treat this. A lot of times in medicines, we treat empirically. Um, or better yet, if you're going in for the gut workup, point this out to your GI doc and make sure they do some biopsies if you have these symptoms, even though it looks normal to them. Um, what's the management of this? Um, of course, stop smoking, as I'll tell anybody, and stop those medications under your doctor's supervision um, that can cause it, like the ones I just talked about. Uh, get on an autoimmune diet, which usually means no glutens, dairy, even soy, and sugars especially, maybe nightshades, corn, alcohol, probably good to get off of it. Um, you need to balance your gut microbiome with pre- and probiotics. Um, you know, you can use Imodium with this thing freely. You may be on a modem for a long time. Certainly, it helps the symptoms, so don't worry about using it. This isn't a viral uh, type of diarrhea. This is chronic, so use a modem. It works. In fact, it was the main course of treatment until recently. They discovered that um, a drug we used in COVID a lot through nebulizers, budesonide, really is a game changer with this disease. Um, the brand name of it is Endocort EC. Now, it is it is a steroid, but it's not a systemic steroid because in that capsule, it's not released till it hits your colon. So it doesn't have the systemic 
effects like you would if you took prednisone um, and things like that. It's a lot safer. Shouldn't pop your sugars up, cause swelling, cause a lot of that stuff. So um, it's been a really good treatment um, in capsule form. Budesonide uh, has been. Um, Cholestyramine is another thing that I've used for this disease. I've used it a lot for chronic diarrhea, especially in bile acid malabsorption cases, which may be part of this. Um, it's a gut binder. People know it as a cholesterol medication, but and it does lower cholesterol, but it really uh, is a bile acid gut binder. So it really works really well for this. Another one uh, that you may have heard of the trade name Asacol that we use a lot for more extreme cases of colitis, more obvious cases, mesalamine. It's a salicylate that sometimes is used. As a matter of fact, before budesonide, it, it was a mainstay of treatment. Sometimes immunomodulators like azothioprine can be used for severe retractor, refractory cases. Methotrexate, that chemotherapeutic drug, could be helpful. A lot of side effects. I don't like to use this one unless I have to. Even biologics like Humira have been um, tested and some, with somewhat success. That's a high dollar, could be a lot of side effect medications that you really probably don't want to get on for this. But um, it has been tried and used successfully in some, a few cases that I've seen in studies. Fecal transplants have been helpful. Uh, surgeries, it, it, at the very end, if you can't, nothing else, and you're wasting away, surgeries like ileostomies or subtotal colectomies have been done for this. Um, so think about microscopic colitis. So if you suffered from chronic diarrhea and there are no answers, you need to think about this and maybe try empirically some of the Get a colonoscopy with a biopsy if you can, but think about maybe even some empiric treatment with some of these things like the, the budesonide capsules that may help. Um, I suspect it's a lot more common than, than has been diagnosed. I, I just know it is. There's no doubt in my mind that it is. I even think COVID um, can be a trigger for this. You know, we've seen a lot of gut dysfunction, including a lot of diarrhea from COVID. So I think COVID-19 can definitely trigger this condition. Um, so look deeper into if you suffer from chronic non-bloody diarrhea into microscopic colitis. Do your research because there is hope for this. It's treatable. Thanks. This is Dr. Rogers. I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.